So here is a walk around of the Lifestyle Campus Icon Evo Hybrid Camper. I had originally ordered a StarVision PX1 camper trailer but they couldn't supply it and I'm pretty glad at the end of the day I did get the Icon, it's a better quality unit. Uh, this is the two seater dinette layout version and it retails for $33,950. Um, I've highlighted in green standard inclusions and red for optional extras or aftermarket upgrades I've added. So let's start from the front of the Icon Evo. It has a galvanised drawbar, a Cruise Master DO35 articulating hitch, Anderson plug for the alternator to BMS, uh, breakaway units an upgrade to 2200 kilos, the elect brake controller is what I've added, the ARC XO 750 jockey wheel, uh, part brake, uh, bash guards that can actually be replaced, there's a hatch for two gas bottles, they're four to four and a half kilos, and a cushion cover that is removable. So moving to the left side, we have a front hatch, and at the top it is a pole shelf that goes right through to the other side. Um, so that's for poles, awning, winders, and anti-flat kit. And then the bottom storage is large enough for jerry cans and awnings, etc. So next is the fridge hatch, uh, which comes with a fridge slide and it's large enough for a 95 litre fridge. Um, I've put the Kickass 75 litre dual zone fridge in and I had an additional Anderson plug installed. It's a bit more secure than the standard SIG socket that comes with the unit. That's a pretty good uh, fridge that has Bluetooth control. Now I made up a cable saver using a key coil and a self-adhesive hook and I've also made up an insect mesh around the fridge because the opening to the fridge hatch is an opportunity for bugs to get into the camper. It's just an insect mesh with magnetic tape so it's easy to remove and put back on. So next is the main door, which is a full-size door, um, and it's a two-part with a fly screen and a roll-up privacy screen on the inside. And this is a good feature. The Star Vision only had a half door. I had installed the optional 240 volt GPO kit, and I put on an external TV mount as well. So moving on, you move, get to the main kitchen area, and firstly the pantry, which is a really deep shelf and has an even deeper pocket off to the left. And the hatch door makes a really handy prep table and where I put my espresso machine or other uh, electrics I like to use with the 240 volt system. I had the optional internal and external 240 volt pack installed giving plenty of 240 volts. There's three outside and two inside. So moving along we have the kitchen hatch itself. Um, with this swings out we have the stove and sink and whatnot. And so here we have uh, storage for plates and cups in a zipped cover. We have uh, drawers, two drawers that slide out. So for fairly flat objects and breadboards and whatnot, a shelf. Here we have our main electrics as well. And hidden away is a really convenient cutlery drawer underneath that, um, that meal area. It also has internal LED what lights, which is a really nice feature. Uh, the swing out kitchen has a nice bench surface area, two burners and a sink. Um, they're really good quality burners, work really well and you have extra storage under the sink. Uh, the sink has a 12 volt pump but no hot water but that's okay because I have my own Coleman portable hot water system that I use anyway. Okay, so moving to the rear, you actually have an additional Anderson plug on the back with quick connect water and two gas outlets. Um, spare tire, I had a firewood box put on as well, that's optional. And then I had a cover made for that. There's also the easy lift roof, roof system, which is optional as well. And I used the tow hitch for a barbecue arm. So moving on around to the other side, you have access to the really large storage area with the hatch door. Uh, there's storage sleeves on the door itself. I got the optional annex kit. There's the battery box. I put in an optional Red Arc manager system and inverter. So you have inside, you have the inverter and the 240 volt access there. Uh, that's the 240 volt pack. 
Now, I actually swapped out the AGMs to lithium, which made it about 40 odd kilos lighter. That was fantastic. Next, there's a middle hatch and that's opposite the kitchen pantry and that's handy for access to small bits and pieces of store at the front. I uh, also had the optional filtered dust suppression system installed. Uh, yet to really test that out, but we will in Queensland. And back to the front again, you have another of those small storage hatches, the same as the other side. So you have the large area at the bottom, you can fit a jerry cam, but, and you can also put all your anti-flat kit and other poles in the top of the hatch. Oh, I forgot to show you, this is the external 240 volt shore for power, and it has two 80 litre tanks. One fills at the front in front of the axle, and the other one's the rear on the kitchen side. Uh, the camper comes standard with a four meter wind out awning. Uh, it's easy and fast to use and you can option in the anti-flap kit and annex walls and skirting as well. So another option I put on is 275 watt Victron solar panels on the roof. The camper comes standard with gas struts on both sides. It makes it really easy to lift the roof. Also standard is independent suspension, which is pretty much standard now for all caravans in this category. Just a quick mod was using a pool noodle to protect the piping. So a bit about the interior. It's a real queen size inner spring mattress with a foam top. It's not a folding type, so it's super comfortable. You have access to the underbed storage. It has a cabinet with a large drawer over the fridge slide and the two seater bench seat has heaps of under seat storage. It has two windows with privacy screens and insect mesh as well. Overall impressions are good. It's easy to tow, fast to set up. It's got all the features you need and it's a very comfortable camper.